Frankie, you're a Barcelona player now, but um, you could have been a Barcelona player one year ago. I believe there was a, a video that the, the guys at Ajax showed to some of the younger players to stop them playing. What memories do you have of that and how important was that in you staying at Ajax for, for another year? Yeah, it was like uh, we were with seven, six or seven guys there. And we, uh, we, you know, we didn't have the best season the season before. And uh, yeah, like the guys, uh, we had a bit doubts of we had to stay or we had to move to another club for development. And they showed us a video about uh, what they ex expected from the next season and what they were expecting from us to convince us to stay and to show their trust in uh, our guys, in the talents. So, no, it was, uh, yeah, it was good that they did that. And uh, I think otherwise we would have stayed as well, but uh, it helped. For sure. It was, uh, it was an historic season last year for Ajax, winning the double, getting to the Champions League semi-final. What was it like to be, to be part of that side? No, I think we always, uh, we've always had uh, a lot of talented players at Ajax. I think that's a bit of the philosophy of the club as well. No, we had a really talented squad, but there was missing something. And I think the year before we were also a bit unlucky. and. Uh, we all know what happened with uh, Nuri in the preseason. So I know the, the conditions to be a great team were there, but there was something missing. And last year, everything uh, fitted in uh, really good. Can you put your finger on what it is that happens when you get on one of those runs in the league and the Champions League? Is it just the momentum, the winning? Is it the confidence that, that, that comes from that? Yeah, I think it's a bit of everything, but I think it starts with uh, that we had a really talented and uh, squad and just a lot of quality players. Uh, I think uh, the idea of how we wanted to play was really good, the vision, the tactics. And then when you fit that together, the tactic was really good and we had a lot of quality players. And when you have a bit of luck, then uh, you can achieve great things. You say about the way you're playing, obviously the way you were playing was, was great to watch. It was attractive football, it was fun football. I guess you guys were just a big part of that, that run and the momentum that you guys down to the fact that you're young guys having fun as well. Yeah, Yo, we, we, uh, we had a really, really a lot of fun, of course, because I think uh, it was a special team, uh, not only for the qualities and, uh, and the tactics, but we were a bit of a, uh, yeah, all of, uh, it felt like we were friends playing together and uh, no, it was, uh, was an amazing season. Obviously, the standout games were the wins at Real Madrid and at Juventus to get to the Champions League semi-final. Uh, how were those games specifically for you? I mean, you must, they must have been great fun to play in. Uh, no, I think those are the best memories. Uh, we became champions. That was for, uh, yeah, for our, how do you say it, uh, what we did over a whole season. It was amazing and the celebrations were amazing. But if I have to name one or two games, I would name uh, Juventus and Madrid away because it was just a big surprise for everyone in Europe. I think the way we played was was amazing and really good to give people joy. And uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, I only have really good memories from it. It was a great season, but obviously you've now left, you're here at Barcelona, Matej Delit's gone to Juventus. Uh, is there an element of sadness to see, to see the team breaking up and the way things develop on the back of that success? And maybe, you know, like, is it just pride of what you've achieved and what you've now gone on to achieve? No, I'm really proud of the season we had and I'm proud to see if guys are making big movements. I think they all deserve it. And, but of course, I feel a bit sad. Not that I regret it, not at all, because I'm really proud and happy to be here. But of course, it's a bit sad that the team uh, is breaking up. But you, you know those things uh, are going to happen when you have a season like that uh, at a club at Ajax. And uh, yeah, uh, it's just the way it is. Do you think you say it's just the way it is, obviously? Do you think it will always be that way? Do you think there could be a time where maybe Ajax can can keep their best players and can sort of, you know, maybe if you'd stayed together, maybe this year you could have gone for the Champions League? Or yeah. do you think we could see that? Do you think that's just the way it's going yeah. to be with Ajax now and has to be accepted? I, I think it depends a lot of the of the competition. Then the competition needs to grow a lot because the Eredivisie, for me, is a great competition to play in and uh, it was a great time. but. The Eredivisie now these days cannot compare to the La Liga, Premier League and all those competitions. So I think it has a lot to do with the competition. Another player who's been linked with a move away from Ajax is your ex-teammate Donny van der Beek. Uh, he's been linked with Real Madrid. I guess for you it would be, it would be tough to see him as a friend move to a rival in, in Spain. 
No, I prefer him to stay at Ajax because <laughs> I wouldn't have him as an opponent and uh, uh, Ajax would, uh, would stay strong. But uh, no, of course, uh, uh, when, he, when, he, when it's all settled and if he moves to Madrid, uh, I'm really happy for him. I think he deserves it. He's a great player. And, uh, then I will see him uh, in Spain. Obviously, having played with him, he's, he's obviously got. Do you think he's got the ability to you know, go to the top level? As you and you and Matic have to sign for a top club, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that he has the abilities because I think he showed that last season in the Champions League he was amazing, especially in the knockout uh, phase. So I think he has showed to the world and everyone in Europe that he has the abilities to to become uh, of that level. Was there an element of relief that the, the Barcelona transfer was announced in, in January, so that was the chapter closed and you could, you could focus on the rest of the season? For me, it felt really good to close the deal in January because then, uh, what you said, all of the rumours were behind us and I could uh, just focus on Ajax. Before that, I could just focus on Ajax as well, but it was just a nice feeling to know what, uh, what was coming next year. How have your, your first few weeks been as a Barcelona player? Obviously, you've been busy with the Tour of Japan now here in the United States. No, I'm really enjoying it so far. The team is helping me a lot with everything uh, on the field and off the field. I feel really good, I feel comfortable. Uh, they made me feel at home, so the first, uh, first month or three weeks are uh, really good so far. You made some comments after a couple of the friendlies about you know, wanting to move the ball quicker, press a little bit more maybe once you've, once you've lost the ball. Um, are you really self-critical? Have you got ridiculously high level of demands? The coach Ernesto Valverde said said that you are quite sort of you know got very high standards for yourself. Uh, no, yeah, I have high standards for myself and for the team as well. But I'm not the boss of the team, so I don't need to say anything about that. But uh, I just demand uh, a lot from myself, and I think you always need to look at the things you can improve, and because otherwise you're not getting a better player and. I'm still young, so I need to uh, improve a lot. How are the, the, the similarities, obviously obvious, between the Barcelona and the Ajax philosophy? But I mean, for you, what are the similarities? What are the differences? No, I think the philosophy and the idea of the clubs are the same. They want to uh, be dominant, want to have possession a lot, uh, want to enjoy the fans and, uh, and everything. But uh, I think they are not big differences, but there are some differences in the way of playing. Uh, I think it's normal, every club plays in a different way, but you can compare them for sure, because the idea and the vision of the club is the same, but uh, the way of playing is a bit different actually, but I'm playing with so much quality players that it's more easy for me to, to, uh, to fit in the team. How does Frankie de Jong like to relax in his free time? Yeah, I try to do a lot uh, of or, or a lot. I try to do some things uh, uh, for myself in the gym and everything. And but in preseason, you always need to be a bit careful because you have to gain fitness. And uh, it's a bit. Uh, they say the trainers say that it's a bit dangerous to do some extra stuff. So I just need to be patient and uh, wait for the season not to start, and then I can do a lot. Not, not go too hard too soon. Yeah, yeah, because they're saying otherwise you get injured. Does that perfectionism that you have, you know, to achieve even more, to be even better on the pitch, does that extend extend to your life off the pitch? For example, if you if you're cooking something at home, or or is it just something that's on the pitch? No, no, not at all, not at all. I'm just a, a person who can relax at home, and uh, if we're eating food, it doesn't need to be the best or everything. It's just just normal at all. Some footballers like to watch a lot of football when they're, when they're not playing. Javi Hernandez was obviously very meticulous with how much he liked watching different leagues, different standards. Um, other players have said, you know, they like to completely disconnect when they're not playing. Which, which camp do you fit into? No, I'm watching a lot of football. I like it because football is a, bit of, uh, uh, is a big part of my life. So uh, I like it to watch football and uh, no, I'm planning to still uh, to still doing it. You watch most of the European leagues and stuff? And yeah, I'm watching a lot of football, like the big European leagues, uh, uh, Dutch football as well. So. It's an exciting time to be part of the Dutch national team after a couple of failures to qualify for national tournaments. Um, got to the finals of the, the Nations League last year. What's it like to be, to be part of the Dutch team at the moment? No, it's really good. We are, I think we have a lot of talented players, uh, some world-class players as well. So. Uh, the future is looking bright, or 
how, how you want to say it. Uh, uh, I think we're in a good fight now. It's been a bit negative over uh, the last uh, the last few years, but now it's all looking positive, and uh, we just have to make sure that we are going to qualify for the Euros, and then. Uh, we will see uh, how far we can uh, reach on that tournament. Obviously, Ronald Koeman is the is the manager of the national team. He obviously was part of Barca's dream team. Um, what's he like as a coach? What's your relationship like with him? And I guess he was obviously important in you deciding to come to Barcelona when you were weighing up the options that you had to leave Ajax. No, of course, uh, I asked him for advice uh, on my choice for a new club. He was really enthusiastic about Barcelona, I, uh, I need to say. but. Uh, um, no, of course, as a coach, he's really good. He's just uh, he gives the team confidence. Tactically, he's strong. So, uh, no, I think we're all really happy with it.